Welcome to this short video presentation of Project Tracker, the one-click method to create project management S-curves from the most popular project management software. So we can import data from uh, Primavera P6 using the uh, SDK or via XER files, Microsoft Project via the API or Microsoft Project M XML files or direct from Aster Power Project. For this uh, demonstration, we will do uh, Primavera P6 SDK. So we'll just log into the SDK. We're going to select a project, one of the standard ones. And Project Tracker allows us to uh, incorporate two baselines. Um, this could be as soon as possible or as late as possible or the original program and the target program. So we'll just select both of those. And that's immediately analyzed the project and created our S curves for us. Now, the, um, the unique thing about Project Tracker is that uh, you don't need to add resources or costs to create S curves. Um, so it analyzes the amount of duration uh, in each day and calculates a very quick uh, S curve from that information. Uh, so it's extremely straightforward to create S curves. And you can see what we have here. We have uh, the actual uh, up to somewhere at the end of April and then our target curve moving on from there. Now if we look at the S curves tab, you can see this is fully configurable. The uh, style or the color of each line however you wish. And we could add the baseline line on so we can see this yellow line now. So we're actually sort of behind program here and it goes on a little bit longer. We can have a look at that in a minute. Uh, we'll put the data date on so we can see that. We can also include the baseline two line if we want, but uh, they seem to be the same information. Uniquely, Project Tracker also includes a, a forecast line which takes the current rate of progress and applies it to the remaining work um, to tell us how well or how badly we're doing on this project. So if we were to continue with this rate, we would finish uh, slightly later than planned. And we can also have a recovery line as well. And what this does, uh, it plots by default the, um, the target line, but Let's assume we wanted to, we had to finish this project maybe by the end of December. It will redraw that line uh, to that particular date and use the profile of uh, duration in this particular instance to model that line. So this can be used to, to look at different scenarios uh, of completion dates. So there are some additional uh, lines in here that would be hard to achieve in something like Excel and the data does come in uh, very quickly. So we'll just turn those two off to keep it clean. Um, this data then can be is displayed in text format as well uh, if needed and this can be edited so we can see uh, the actual amount of work, how much we are behind, uh, where we've slipped and the target information at completion. So it was, goes through all the analytics of the project, telling us uh, the likely completion dates and where we are to date. As I say, everything's configurable. So all of these lines can be changed in terms of color uh, or turned on and turned off. If we go to the settings tab, uh, there's some more information here. Uh, so initially I can set the S-curve type. So this is based on duration at the moment. But if we did have resources in here, let's just pop the baseline back on. We could change that to cost, for example. And you can see that that uses the cost that was applied in the project plan and reprofiles the curve. And similarly with resource man hours, you can see we've got a slightly different curve and resultant output there. So we can use duration, cost or resource. All that data is brought in at one go. So that's, once the data is in, it's extremely easy to, to use. And of course, we can save this information so we don't have to run the uh, 
import all uh, time and time again. Um, we can apply weighting, so we can add uh, weightings to tasks. It's particularly useful on if duration method is used, where it would treat all the tasks the same. But in uh, each of the software, you can apply weightings to certain activities, and that will obviously affect the profile of the graph. Dynamic status enables me to, as I move up the curve with my mouse, it's telling me, giving me feedback as we go on uh, on the current on the progress uh, that's going to be achieved. So if it was prior to the curve, it's telling us what actually happened at particular dates. This is really dynamic and useful feedback. And if I uh, do it in conjunction with the activity details, as I move my mouse, it's telling me the activities that are occurring at that particular time and data about those uh, activities. So for example, the cost, the baseline cost, the effort, and the baseline effort. So uh, not only is uh, dead data exported to Excel, which is the common way of creating S-curves, we now have sort of a dynamic project management system where we've imported the details of the project. So rather than just look at some curves, we can do analytics to see around this area maybe what's causing the variance from the particular baseline. So that's a very useful uh, tool included in the software. We can further uh, look at uh, data by slice. So um, this is the duration per weekly, per monthly time unit in this particular instance and its baseline. So again, we can see uh, more useful perhaps than an S-curve in this particular instance, maybe around October here, uh, there is a lot less work going on than planned. And obviously this is where this variation happens here. So what we're trying to do is to use S-curves, which are great for reporting, often used by, requested by clients, but uh, also allow more feedback of information. All the axes are fully configurable, so we can uh, change the slicing time if we want, which would be used for this. So more information there. Or we can change to have the date at the top, or none at all if we so wished. And similarly with the progress axis, um, we can choose to have that maybe on the right to give us the percentage, or we can have both, for example. Uh, we'll go for right. And the comparison baseline, because we brought in two, two baselines, uh, this information here and also in the progress report will be based on uh, whichever comparison baseline we have selected. At any stage, we can click on the raw data over here and we can see the data that makes up uh, the S-curves, which is particularly useful um, for seeing where variations occur and these can be edited if required, and the graph would update itself. So there's a lot of configuration options that we have here. We can also uh, overlay a Gantt chart, which is um, very, very useful. Um, so this is incorporating the strength of a project management solution with the S-curve. So if I click on the Gantt chart, you can see that we have now brought in the uh, the Gantt chart and I can scroll through the activities to see the project. So these are the activities that are occurring around this particular date. And we can see that this is the concrete second floor. So we move a mouse over it and we can see that it's slipped 39 days from its plan. So this information is again extremely useful for us. And over here there's a red traffic light which gives us the same information. Um, uh, most of these are red on this project, but we have some that are green. So we have a traffic light system. So again, we're able to analyze uh, more clearly what may be affecting the problems with the project. Um, and obviously all this is configurable, the colors of the bars, etc. So we can go and print this information. Uh, we're able to uh, set the uh, orientation, obviously. We can include a corporate logo if required, and we have version control information. So we can add that to a print. 
as well. So if I just close that and do a preview. Bring that to screen. So we have the information in preview. So you can see when it prints, we have the whole Gantt chart as well as the curves and our version control information down the bottom. Now, obviously, this is based on the whole of the project, but also we have we import uh, both WBS information and the activity code. So, for example, we may just want to have a curve for the design and engineering team um, or the interior finishes. So we're able to, once that data is imported, drill down and create S curves uh, for each um, discipline if required. Or And similarly for codes, we might want to look at responsibilities or departments. So this is based on the exterior finishes work done by the engineering department. And there is only one activity. But on bigger projects, it does enable us to perhaps analyze subcontractor performance more accurately. Now, when um, you come to print these out, we're not going to want to create these views all the time. So Project Tracker allows us to save this information to a view. So if I add this as a view, I could call this the engineering department. And I'm just going to tick there, batch print, and show you in a second what that means. So we get a list of the views in a second, um, which show us the uh, scope and the, uh, the code, and tells us batch print. So what this enables us to do is to create, if we want, if we had, say, 10 departments or 10 subcontractors, rather than recreate these views each time and open them up and go to print, once they're ticked as batch print, we would click on batch print and those would automatically come off the printer. Now, also, once a view is created, uh, next week, next month, we're going to do another export and we don't want to have to recreate all these views every time. So what you can do there is to copy the views from a previous export uh, and they will come into this project. So they will automatically be set up as batch print. So each week, all you really need to do is to do a new import of the data, copy the views from the master file and all of our reports are already set up. We can add text to uh, the charts. So if we wanted to add some text to say what's going on, we can do so. And that enables us to say uh, late due to del uh, delivery issue. And obviously, we can change the color of this and do sorts of things and make it bigger and rotate it if necessary. And this then applies itself to the view. So it knows it's part, this annotation is part of that view because obviously each view may have um, a different um, might have different text. So if we were in the purchasing department, we don't want to see the engineering annotation. So in the purchasing department, again, we'd add a view called purchasing, set it to batch print. And you can see now we have two views, which would automatically print if we were to go to batch print. Information can be exported if you wish to Excel to, to create f f further graphing, uh, but obviously that isn't really necessary because everything is contained within Project Tracker. So very simple to use, very simple to import the information and to create fully functional S-curves with the addition, if required, of a Gantt chart to show the recipient what is going on. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this uh, short video. Thank you for listening.